When he came back from the First World War, he was one of the great heroes of the country. I mean, in Edinburgh alone, something like 200,000 people walked round his coffin in, in St Giles's when he was lying in state there. The Lions Led by Donkeys was a book written by Alan Clark in the 60s. That was, I think, where uh, my grandfather's reputation was really destroyed. And uh, the Lions were, of course, the, the British um, Tommies. And of course, they were Lions, but they certainly were not led by do donkeys. The, the Germans were defeated in nine consecutive battles and the British alone took nearly 200,000 uh, prisoners. This was, I mean, the most amazing example of military leadership. And those involved um, up at the top, the people who were leaders, my God, they weren't donkeys. And then there was, first of all, a, a musical called Oh, What a Lovely War, which was a satire on the First World War. And then the well-known Blackadder series. And the sad thing is that people think that actually the First World War was um, like Oh, What a Lovely War and Blackadder Goes Forth or whatever it was. I think the other group of people one should mention um, are the, the war poets, um, some of whom I, I think um, wrote marvellous poetry, but if you actually read what soldiers wrote about their life in the field, it doesn't actually bear much resemblance to what Siegfried Sassoon um, and, and the like of him actually wrote um, in, in their poetry. Then, um, a military historian called John Terrain appeared and he wrote, uh, he wrote a book about my grandfather called The Educated Soldier. And that was really the first sign of um, what is termed, I think, rather misleadingly, revisionism. Um, and um, since then, there have been a considerable number of books that do give some idea of what my grandfather and his generals and his whole, all his armies achieved in that relatively short time. Mm -hmm. 